Welcome to Lovely English Stories. This story is written for intermediate English learners. Ready? Let's get started. B1, B2, English Story. The Seaside Cafe. It had been a challenging few months for the owners of the seaside retreat. Jack and Paula had bought the cafe after taking a leap of faith and quitting their full-time jobs. Some people thought they were mad. They knew they were a little crazy to go ahead with such a large project. But if they didn't do it now, when would they do it? They both lived by the motto of you only live once. Life is for living, not for sitting back and letting it pass you by. Jack and Paula didn't want to look back on their lives and have any regrets, so they always threw themselves headfirst into everything they did. They had a great partnership. Jack had recently received some inheritance money from his grandpa, who had sadly passed away. His grandpa made him promise to do something special with the money and not just spend it on cars and holidays. Of course, cars and holidays could be special, but Jack and Paula had bigger dreams for the newly acquired cash. Paula had worked for 15 years as a firefighter and Jack was an accountant. They had been together for 10 years and had managed to save quite a lot of money. They decided not to have children and instead had three dogs, Millie, Molly and Max. They loved to spend their weekends and any free time they had by the sea. They only lived an hour away from their favourite resort, so it was easy to be by the coast in no time. They often talked about owning their own cafe in their favourite seaside spot, but they never quite had enough money. Now Jack had some inheritance, they could make their dreams a reality. They had already paid off the mortgage on their small but modest home, so they didn't have to worry about that. Now all they had to do was make a budget and a plan. They worked out how much money they had and how much they would need to open their dream cafe. They also started to check various estate agent websites to try and find any commercial properties that were up for rent or for sale. As luck would have it, they spotted a small building which overlooked their favourite bay. They knew exactly where it was as they regularly walked past it. They would often say how much potential the old building had. Apparently, it was last occupied in the 1970s, so it was quite old-fashioned and would need a lot of work. They booked in to view the property and checked with the local council about planning permission. Apparently, the cafe already had permission to be extended. They decided to put in a low offer. They offered £20,000 less than the asking price, but it was worth a shot. To their surprise, the owner accepted. They had inherited the building from their auntie and they lived in America, 
so they just wanted to get rid of it. Over the following months, lots of changes took place. Jack and Paula had to fill in so much paperwork. Instead of leaving their jobs straight away, they reduced their hours and both worked part-time so they could spend long weekends at the cafe. They hired local builders to help them renovate and they started working on marketing the cafe so the locals and holiday makers would know to visit them once they were open. They worked incredibly hard, but they loved the challenge. During the renovations, they lived above the cafe in a small flat. Their plan was to turn the flat into a holiday let, but for now, it would be their weekend home. Millie, Molly and Max loved their long weekends by the sea. They were happier than ever. Paula and Jack also felt more content and healthier despite the stress they were under. As the months rolled on, the cafe started to take shape. There was enough room inside the cafe for five tables and outside there would be room for between six and eight tables. Paula started to put together some menu ideas as Jack contacted local businesses to drum up some marketing. They decided their grand opening would be in July. Even though the cafe would be ready before, they wanted to make sure they had the best possible chance of pleasant weather. They picked their opening weekend to be the same weekend as the local town's summer festival. Paula and Jack started interviewing for a couple of staff to help them with food preparation and serving. They wanted people who were flexible and whom they could trust. They chose a university student called Macy and a retired school teacher called David. Macy would be able to work during the weekends and David could help on weekdays. It was the perfect combination. Before they knew it, opening weekend had arrived. They had prepared thoroughly and felt ready to start their next adventure. Some of their friends from their hometown came along to wish them luck and sample some of the homemade cakes and buns. On their first day, they had well over 200 customers. They were reviewed in the local newspaper and received five stars. It was a slow process, but week after week, they got more customers and their popularity grew. They knew that during the winter months, they would get less customers, but they had prepared financially and still worked their part-time jobs back in their hometown. Not only had they opened a lovely English cafe, but they were making so many people happy. They hired two more part-time staff and extended their menu. Max, Millie and Molly loved the cafe and were popular with the customers. They would often sit outside and greet people with a wagging tail and a sniff as they arrived. Paula and Jack were happy they decided to go ahead and invest in the cafe. They felt like their lives were now more fulfilled and they were no longer trapped by a typical 9 to 5 routine. The first summer at the seaside retreat was such a success 
that Paula and Jack looked into opening another cafe in the same seaside town the following summer. They couldn't wait to see what the future would hold for them and the seaside retreat. We hope you enjoyed this lovely English story. Thank you for stopping by. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share.